I can hook the electrodes up to this guy. I'm gonna turn the voltage meter down, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm just gonna let these sit in these liners overnight. Tomorrow morning, we'll try them on, see how he likes them. All right, Dylan, check it out, buddy. Look, I, I put the molds in your boots and heated them up to stretch them out. Right now, we'll take them out now. How's that feel? i put this one on. Well, what do you think? This is my son, Dylan. He is three years old and already a ripping skier. Unfortunately for him, he has an extremely wide foot. So I might even call it a classic fat foot. This is gonna make ski boots for him a challenge for his entire life. And this year, his boots are already hurting. My feet hurt. You wanna go inside? Uh-huh. Do you need to go inside because uh -huh. your feet hurt? Uh-huh. Okay. So I need to find a way to fit his boots without relying on him to specifically tell me where they hurt or to just have him break them in all on his own. So I've made these custom boot molds for him that heat internally so I can shove them up inside his boots and break them in for him and know that he has the perfect fit in both boots. The key to these molds is this nichrome wire. Right there. So this wire, when you hook up an electric current to it, heats up. And so I'm gonna take this wire and I'm gonna lay it in inside of the molds and this is what's gonna allow this mold to heat up from the inside and make perfect punches. But before I do this, let's go back and see how I made these molds here. To build these molds, I first needed to make a cast of Dylan's feet. So I had to come up with these casts first. And this cast is a simple clamshell design. The material I'm using to build these molds is this, JB Weld Steel Stick Epoxy. Because I'm using a chemical to build the mold out of, the first step I needed to do was to actually wrap Dylan's foot in plastic so I'd protect him from the steel stick itself. Me fell and hurt my foot. How did you fall and hurt your foot? Let me clean. All right, will you stand up here? And I was biking. Once I had his foot wrapped in plastic, I took three sticks of steel stick epoxy, kneaded together till I get one big ball. Once I have the ball, I kind of made like an oval shape out of it, and then I put it between two sheets of plastic. The first sheet is just a regular trash bag that I've cut in half. The trash bag plastic is by far the best. And then I lay that down on my blue pad, and then the second sheet was this really stiff plastic material that I have from another project in the house. However, what I find is that it sticks to the back of that plastic, and this isn't the right way to go. There we go. And now is the tricky part of getting a three-year-old to stand on a mold on a pad that you've got set up in your attic. This was extremely difficult. It took a lot of patience from me. I can't even tell you how much of a challenge this was to get a three-year-old to stand still to make a mold. Can you go out with your knee? Mm -hmm. Over here? Touch my knee? No, over here, over here. Thank you, right there, yeah, good. Okay, all right, ready? We're gonna pick your foot up. Good. Step off. You can step off, Dylan. Thanks, Dad. All right, here we go. Starting the second one. On the second mold, I followed the same procedure as the first one. However, did a much better job on this one of having Dylan step up on the pad first, put his hand on my head, and then get him standing on it. Put this foot up here first. Hold my shoulder. Come hold my shoulder. Come on. Come up here. Now, while he is standing there and I'm getting him to press his foot in, similar to making a footbed, however, I'm taking that plastic that's wrapped around the bottom of the putty and I'm actually pulling it up over his feet. So I'm getting the mold itself to actually wrap up and over his toes and to come up around his ankle, around the ankle bone here. I didn't quite get the ankle bone on this side, but to come up over the heel too. So I get the exact mold of his heel. So the heel pocket's perfect. So I'm pulling that trash bag up around this whole mold so that it shapes and really comes around the contours of his feet. The steel stick epoxy has a five minute set time. So all they had to do was have him stand on it for five minutes while I kind of hold his foot in place. A key factor when building the lower mold was starting out on a soft pad. This is a blue pad, it's like a physio pad that I have. So I had done stand on this, so this would absorb some of the shape of his foot and actually push the mold up around his foot. Now are we all done, Dad? Uh, for the morning and the afternoon, we're going to do more, okay? Okay. I am really pleased with how these turned out. I got good coverage around the toes. Now I am going to try and press in the top half of the molds. The concept when making the top half of the cast was that I could put his foot in the lower half of the cast and then just take 
another round of putty and press it over the top of his foot and press it around the cast. And then I'd have these edges kind of locked into the cast itself that will then later clamshell together. And then I can make the mold out of this cast. Can you bend your knee? Thank you. I'll hold it, we'll take it off. Spider-Man's cat even jump. Spider-Man can't even jump? You sure? You lift your foot up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I did have the trash bag barrier around Dylan's foot, separating the clamshell cast did prove challenging. I'm gonna take the bottom off. Oh, we got tape still on you. Hold it. Oh, easy, easy. There you go. Now that, that part's done, we're gonna let that cure for an hour, and then we'll check it later. It's been a little while since I made these casts and now I'm getting ready to make the molds. But before I can make the molds out of the cast, I need to get up inside the cast and hollow out the toe box. I don't want those little individual toe holes to be there in the mold itself. I want kind of a nice open roomy toe box when I'm molding and pressing out his liners. So now that I have my cast built of Dylan's feet, I am gonna put in the nichrome wire. I'm gonna Hi, bend guys. it in. To make the actual molds of Dylan's feet, I first need to shape the nichrome wire into the shape of the cast. I start at the heel, I wrap it all the way around the foot, and then bring it back out by the heel. Once the wire is in the shape of the cast, I can then work on the mold itself. Once again, I use a trash bag as a barrier and a release agent for the putty as I put it into the mold. Now for this step, I am using JB Weld High Heat Epoxy Putty. This has a 500 degree temperature rating, and more importantly, it has a one hour cure time. So that gives me time to work it, put the putty in, I put it into the bottom half of the mold first, I spread it all the way out to the sides, then I add my nichrome wire in after that. Once I have my nichrome wire in place, I put more putty to hold the nichrome wire in place. Then I move over to the top half, I put the putty all the way on top here, making sure I can leave a little bit extra at the edges. You can see in this mold, I have too much excess putty around the edges. That's gonna be an issue later. And then I can take this clamshell, clamshell it together, and then I get my putty to stick. Then I take my foot, my finger and a little bit more putty and go up inside and push and press out that mold all the way around so I get nice clean and strong edges. And then the last thing I do is put little electro caps on the wires, trim those so they have something to hook my gator clips to at the end. I used five sticks of the high heat epoxy. All right, I let this thing dry for about four or six hours ish. Now let's pull it apart. I think Bryce. I'm the strongest person. You're the strongest. Uh huh. Here we go. Oh, all right, the mold's okay. Let's pull this up off. Look at that. There's the top of Dylan's foot right there. <laughs> We're gonna chip this, uh, this stuff off the sides here. When I made this mold, I had a lot of extra material up here by the rim. So when I clamped it together, I had some bulging and it didn't quite sit as tightly as it should have. I used my Dremel tool to cut the bottom mold off of the mold itself so I could pop the heel out and then the toe out. And then I also dremeled away at the mold itself to smooth out the bulging area around the outside and to smooth out any imperfections. After that, I brought the mold inside and sized it up next to Dylan's foot to see just how bad that bulging was. Once I made some simple measurements next to Dylan's foot, I took the mold back out of the garage, did a little bit more sanding. I actually brought the mold back inside and added material around to fill any little imperfection, any voids, any divots in it, to smooth it out, to add a little bit of uh, area around his toe box, to add a little in front of his toes, so he'd have a little extra room in front of the toes and really make that final shape of the mold as smooth and consistent as absolutely possible. On to number two. I'm gonna go with pretty much the same method. Um, I may try and flatten it out a little bit more before I put it into the bottom one to try and get away with using four sticks of the steel stick epoxy or the high heat epoxy. But if it takes five, it takes five and that's what it is. This is so exciting. I have the mold from yesterday that I'm about to pull out of the bag and I also have kind of a semi-completed mold here that I get to put into Dylan's liner for the first time and see how my whole mold experiment worked. First, I want to pull this guy out. The top is always super easy to get off. Boom, off. Then I can just peel the plastic. Let's see how we did. 
All right, looks pretty good. Put that aside. Now, we get to actually put this mold here into the liner itself. Oh yeah, it fits in there great. You can see it's all the way down in there. You can see, maybe not on the camera, but right in the toe here, I can push and I can feel where the hard solid mold is pushing through here. So that's gonna mold that shape for Dylan's foot. The instep is like so big on this. I'm really excited about that. And then the next thing I get to do is take this thing into my little science room and hook up the electrodes to it and heat this mold up. Here is my Variac. This is the voltmeter that I use to control the temperature of the mold. Plugged into it, I have these gator clips, which I'm gonna hook to each diode here, and I gotta make sure they don't touch, so I don't short the circuit. Okay, we'll go one that way, one this way. And now, I'll turn it on, and you can see that it is, what, 68 degrees. The mold is right now 68 degrees, room temperature. So now I'm gonna just slowly turn up some voltage through the Variac. I need to give a new wire time to like warm up or time to like break in. So I'm gonna let it sit here at what about two volts. There's 70 degrees, it is heating. So now we got 76 degrees when I point it right kind of here at the heel. So I'm gonna increase the voltage just a little bit. We're gonna go up to about five, five and a half volts here. Starting to feel the heat coming through my hand. 85 degrees, 91. Oh yeah, and now I'm starting to really feel the heat. I can really feel it through the toes there, which I'm happy about, that's where I want it to be. 100 degrees, 104. I'm getting a really nice even heat all the way around the mold. Dylan has really, really wide feet and it's gonna be a challenge to get him in ski boots for his whole life. But with this technology and with this little design that I have here, I am gonna be able to fit his boots from the inside out and always know that he has a good fitting boot. And if he ever has issues throughout the season, like if his toes start getting jammed up, I can just add material, just like I did here when I smoothed it out. That's what's great about this uh, JB Weld high heat uh, steel stick epoxy, is I could just build up material here. I could add a little metatarsal if I want. I could add six toe if I want. Um, I can really just build on it from here. And then eventually if his, once his foot gets to be like a centimeter or so bigger than the mold, I'll just have to make a new mold. Let's check the top, 87 degrees on the top of the instep, and then I move the, the heat over to the sides, and I am at, let's see, 107. A 20 degree variance from the instep where there is no wire up into the side of the metatarsal where I have the wire and where it's heating up. 129 at five and a half volts. I just pulled Dylan's second foot out of the mold. I am so psyched with how this came out. You can see I got a much better rim around the sides this time. But now I'm gonna take it back out to the garage. I'm gonna clean up these sides, shave it down, and then I'll get to applying the added material after that. Okay, I got the second mold finished up and I'm gonna hook it up to the Variac and I'm gonna crank it up. Let's see how it goes. All right, we are starting out at a temperature of 69 degrees. It's been going for about five minutes and I'm starting to see a little bit of heat, 75. 80 feels like i'm getting pretty decent heat distribution all right i'm gonna crank it up to about seven and a half well i let this go way too far i am at 180 um seven and a half appears to be way too much for this guy Woo, i'm gonna turn that way down 133 there we go that's all the way in there all right that's all the way in there and then i can hook the electrodes up to this guy. All right, I'm gonna turn the voltage meter down. I'm gonna turn it on. I will turn it up. I'll start at five so it heats up slowly. I'm gonna set the timer, let this go for about 20 minutes, and then I'll swap it over to this guy. Okay, so that was 25 minutes in this guy. So I'm gonna turn the variac down, turn it off, unhook the electrodes. Okay, it's a little warm to the touch. I think that's good. The inside's certainly gonna be a little warmer. And then I'm gonna move the electrodes over to the other foot. Down in there. Those are hooked up. Okay, and then we will turn it all the way down, turn it on, go up to about five volts. Okay, let that sit for about 20 minutes. All right, so this was 25 minutes on this guy. This one's definitely a little bit warmer. For whatever reason, this mold is getting hotter than that one, even though this is at five volts. I'm gonna turn this down, turn it off. Okay, unhook the electrodes. 
And now the beauty of these molds in these booths is I can just leave these here overnight. So I don't think I'm gonna put this in Dylan's shell right now. I just don't think I need to. If he starts complaining about a little bit of pain, especially on this uh, left big toe, then I'll put these in the boots as well and I can use my heat gun on the outside as well as heat this up from the inside. Maybe even get a little punch out of the boot. All right, Dylan, check it out, buddy. Look, I, I put the molds in your boots oh. and heated them up to stretch them out. Right now, we'll take them out now. Oh. Oh. How's that feel? Here, put this one on. Well, what do you think? Do they fit better now? Yeah. Do they feel good? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, I'm gonna put your boots on you, okay? Way easier when you stand up. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty hungry. I'm sure you are pretty hungry. Dylan, 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 does it feel way better? Well, what do you think, Dylan? How do they fit? Good. They fit better? Are they more com yeah. Are they more comfortable now than they were yes. before? Oh yeah, uh huh. Yeah, show me. Oh, show me those. Oh wow. Oh. Can you ski on one foot? Let me see. Let me see you go on one foot. Oh, pretty good. Let's do the other one now. Wow. Oh man, that looks good. Let's see a jump. Oh, very good. All right, you want to take them off and eat breakfast? Ski Dad TV is a value for value production. If you make boot molds for your kid and they have the best time of their lives, then please share some of that value back my way.